Hello. So in this lecture, I'd like to talk to you about how to do ray diagrams with converging and diverging lenses. So first of all, let's go ahead and define our terms here. Lenses are objects that use refraction to bend light. They're transparent, often made of glass or plastic, they're curved. And what happens is they use refraction or the bending of light to help form images. There's two main types of lenses. There's converging lenses, and they bend light towards the optical axis and through the focal point. And converging lenses are convex, and they're fatter in the middle. So what, what I mean here is that here in this image, you see a whole bunch of light rays coming in parallel to one another. You can see that all of these light rays are refracted by this lens and they're all refracted by that lens bent towards a specific point, okay? And that point is the focal point. And of course, the distance from the lens, middle of the lens, to that focal point is called the focal length, okay? So this is a converging lens where parallel light rays enter the lens and are bent towards the focal point. Now, the other main type of lens is a diverging lens. And diverging lenses bend light away from the optical axis. Now they bend them at an angle such that it looks like if you were to trace the diverging rays on the far side of the lens back to a point, it looks like all those rays came straight from the focal point, okay? So it's as though they were diverging from the focal point on the near side where the light enters. Diverging lenses are concave. They're thinner in the middle than they are on the edges. So we're going to assume, though, all our lenses in today's lecture are thin. Basically, what that means, though, is that their thickness is small compared to their focal length. So we're going to go through how images are formed for both converging and diverging lenses and then do a more intense example. In order to do this, I think it's nice to use um, Knight's, our supplemental textbook for this course's Knight, and he has a really nice way of breaking down step by step how to uh, do these ray diagrams for both converging and diverging lenses. So let's go through those. Step number one is to draw the optical axis. The optical axis is going to be perpendicular to the plane of the lens and it runs through its center. Then you're going to center your lens on your optical axis and mark your focal points F on either side. The focal point on the near side should be the same side as the object. And then on the far side, you've got the other side there, okay? F should be the same on both sides though, okay? Sometimes it helps to use a ruler when you're doing these uh, ray diagrams. Next, you're gonna draw the object. Now, you don't have to be Michelangelo here, okay? If you can't draw, that's fine. I can't either. Oftentimes in these ray diagrams, we represent the object with an arrow. The arrowhead is there so that we know which way is up in the object and in the image that is formed of the object. Okay, you're going to label your distances. The distance from the lens center to the object, we call that S. And then the height of the object, we call that H. Now, when you draw your array diagrams, you're going to use at least three light rays. You can use more if you want, but three is the minimum. The first ray is a ray that's going to be parallel to the axis for converging lenses. This is for converging lenses, okay? It's a ray that's parallel to the axis that refracts through the far focal point, okay? The second ray is going to be a ray that enters the lens along a line through the near focal point and then emerges on the far side parallel to the axis. And the third is going to be a ray that goes through the center of the lens and then goes straight through. Now, this will make a lot more sense when I show you the example on the next slide, okay? So just hang in there. What you're going to do for a converging lens is you're going to extend the rays until they converge, and this is going to be your image point. After you find the image point, you can draw the rest of the image in after you find it. Then you're going to measure your image distance, S prime, and your image height, H prime. Okay, so here's what we mean. So here's the three rays. Okay, probably the easiest to explain and start with is, first of all, you're going to label your object. So generally what we do is we put um, one part of the object, the base of the object, on our optical axis. You can see here our optical axis is perpendicular 
to the plane of our lens. So this is our optical axis and it's running through F on either side and through the center of the lens. Then your object is drawn here. It's at some distance S from the lens. In this case, the object distance is larger than the focal length. So we have it outside of that here. Okay, so let's go through our three rays. The first is the easiest to the understand, which is the one that goes through the center of the lens. If it goes through the center of the lens, then it doesn't bend, okay? It just goes straight. So here we have an object. Um, we draw from the top of the object generally, or the arrowhead. Those where all our rays are gonna be drawn from. And we're gonna draw from the top of that object through the center of the lens, and then just keep on going in a straight line. So that's the first ray. Here's the next ray. It's also pretty easy to understand. You draw your next ray parallel to the optical axis. Then when it hits the center of the lens, the light is bent and it bends and goes through the focal point on the far side. Okay? Like I said, it's easiest to do this with the ruler. So you're going to draw a straight line from the top of the object straight parallel to the op optical axis through the lens to the center of the lens. Then you're going to have that bend and go through the focal point in a straight line. The third one, you draw from the top of the object here through the focal point on the near side and then down to the lens. If you do it through the focal point on the near side, then when it comes through the far side, it's going to be parallel to the optical axis. So those are the three rays. Now you can see that those three rays all intersect at the same point. That's your image point. That's where you're going to draw the corresponding point of the object on the near side. So see here, I drew all of these rays as coming from the top of my arrow. So where all the rays of the light meet up, that's my image point where the top of the arrow is. And then the image itself is going to run from the optical axis to the image point, which means that my arrow is inverted. Okay, it's upside down. Okay, I hope that was straightforward. Now you can measure your image distance and that's from the center of the lens to where your image is. So you can measure that, and that's S prime, okay? And then you can also see that the image is going to be larger than the object. So it's, it's magnified, it's larger, okay? So it's an inverted magnified image here. All right, upside down images we call inverted, okay? And images that are formed from real light rays that converge at a point where the image is formed, those are called real images, right? So this is formed from real light rays. They converge at the image point right here in real right light rays converge, and so it's a real image. Phew, okay, I hope that's clear. But if not, remember you can pause me and go back and look at it again. Now, we often speak of the object plane, which is the plane in which the object is located, and the image plane, and that's the plane in which the image is located. All right. Now, we define the value for S prime as positive if it's on the opposite side of the lens from the object. So here we have a positive S prime value. And you can see that S prime is larger in magnitude than S. Okay, let's go through how to do the exact same thing, but for a diverging lens. So yet again, I'm going to use Knight's tips here for how to do this. So first, we're still going to draw our optical axis that's perpendicular to the plane of the lens and runs through the center. It also runs through both focal points. Next, you're still going to center the lens on the optical axis and mark your focal points. Third, you're going to draw the object. Okay, use the arrow, that's fine, and label S and H. And then you're going to draw three light rays. Okay, it's going to be slightly different though for diverging lenses. Here we go. The first is a ray that's parallel to the axis and diverges from the near focal point. The second is a ray along the line towards the far focal point that emerges parallel to the axis. And the third is a ray that goes through the center of the lens and straight, just like the converging lens. Yet again, this will probably make a lot more sense once you see the picture. Here we go. Now, you're going to trace those rays and they're going to be diverging on the far side of the lens and you're going to trace them backward. And then the point from which they're diverging is your image point. And it's always going to be a virtual image, which means that it's not formed from real light rays. Okay? Then you're going to measure your image distance S prime. In a diverging lens, S prime is going to be a negative number. 
because it's going to be on the same side of the lens as um, the object. And then you're also going to measure your image height h prime. Okay, so here's the ray diagram for a diverging lens. The three light rays here are labeled A, B, and C. Okay, so we have our optical axis here that goes through the center of the lens and is perpendicular to its plane. We have our focal lengths on either side. We have our near focal point, which is on the same side as the object, and the far focal point, which is on the opposite side of the object. Now we've got our object drawn here. It's a purple arrow. Yet again, our three rays are going to come from the top of the purple arrow. Okay, so the first ray that's the easiest to understand is the one that goes through the center of the lens and just continues on straight. So that's the easiest one to draw. The next one is the one that goes from the top of the object to the center of the lens. When it does that, then on the far side, it's going to uh, be parallel to that lens, okay? But you have to draw it from the top of the object through the lens and right here at the center. It's got to go, if it continued on straight, it would go through that far focal point, okay? So the gray here, the gray here is to help guide your eye and the blue is the actual light ray. So see here, from the top of the object, if you continued on straight through that focal point, that's what would happen. But once you get on the far side of the lens, that light ray is bent and it goes parallel. So see, that's what we meant on the opposite side, on the last slide where we said, a ray um, along the line towards the far focal point emerges parallel to the axis, right? So here's the ray. It's along the line, it's going towards that far focal point, but because it's bent by the lens, it emerges parallel to the axis. Okay? All right. Now, finally here, you're going to draw a ray that goes parallel to the optical axis here, enters the lens, hits the center of the lens, and then diverges and is refracted outward. The direction that it's refracted outward can be traced back to the near focal point. Okay? So the parallel right rays here diverge as if they were coming from that far focal point. So that's the ray that on the previous slide said, a ray parallel to the axis diverges from the near focal point. So that's what we meant by that, okay? So those are our three rays. Now you can see that the real light rays are indicated here in blue. And you can see that on the far side of the lens, opposite the object, they diverge. That's what diverging lenses do. But an image can be formed if you trace back, okay? So see here, if you take the lines that are on the far side of the lens and you draw lines back from that, indicated here in gray, then they will overlap. And where they overlap, that's where your image is formed. So since they, this image is not formed from real light rays, but is traced backwards, it's a virtual image, okay? So the virtual image is formed here and is indicated in the lighter shade of purple right here. It's upright and it's demagnified, okay? It's smaller than the object, so you can see that, okay? So that's what happens with diverging lenses. Let's put some math to this. I always feel that math kind of cements the, the ideas in my head. So we can talk about the magnification of the object, which I indicate here with an M, a lowercase m. And the magnification of the object is the size of the image relative to the size of the object in one dimension. So here, the absolute value of the magnification would be the image height h prime over the object height h, okay? So that just gives the ratio, the relative ratio of the sizes. It tells you whether it's magnified, it's larger, or it's demagnified, it's smaller. But we also know that images can either be upright or inverted, okay? So we can use the equation m is equal to minus s prime over s, where s prime is the distance of the image from the um, center of the lens, and s is the distance of the object um, from the center of the lens. So if you make that ratio minus s prime over s, then you also get the magnification m. If m is a positive number, then that means that the image is upright. And if m is a negative number, then the image is inverted. 
okay? One other equation is really super useful for doing these um, ray tracing and, and thin lens equation things. So here we have our thin lens equation, and you can use it to calculate the image placement if you can measure the object placement and you know the focal length. Or if you measure the distance S and S prime, you can use it to calculate the focal length F of an, uh, a lens. So the thin lens equation goes like this, 1 over S plus 1 over S prime is equal to 1 over F. To remind you, S is the distance of the object to the lens, S prime is the distance from the image to the lens, and F is your focal length. Now, if S prime turns out to be negative from this equation, then the image is on the same side of the lens as the object. And that means it's going to be a virtual image. Let's do an example from Knight's text. We're going to use both the equations and the ray tracing, and you can see that they'll match up. Hopefully this will really cement the idea in your head. An object is 6 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a focal length of 10 centimeters. Where's the image located? Is it upright or inverted? Real or virtual? Here we go. Okay. We're going to use our thin lens equation. This thin lens equation and the magnification equations apply to both converging and diverging lenses. So here we have 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f, our focal length. Plugging in here, it says that the object is 6 centimeters in front of the converging lens. So that means that s is 6 centimeters. We're not given s prime, but we are given the focal length, which is 10 centimeters. So I'll plug that in. So we can now solve 1 over 6 centimeters plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over 10 centimeters. When we solve that using just a little bit of simple algebra, we can see that s prime is equal to negative 15 centimeters. Now the negative sign means that s prime is on the same side of the lens as s, and that makes it a virtual image. We can now use s prime and s to calculate our magnification. The magnification m is equal to minus s prime over s. Plugging that in, minus minus 15 centimeters divided by 6 centimeters gives you 2.5. So it's positive, so that means the image is upright. And it's greater than 1, so that means it's magnified. If it were a number less than 1, then it would be demagnified. Okay? Here's the ray diagram. Okay? First thing I did, I drew the optical axis which is, of course, perpendicular to the plane of my lens. I drew my lens in the center, and I used a ruler and put my focal lengths equidistant from the center of my lens on either side. I placed my object so that it was 6 centimeters or so, right? I, I kind of eyeballed it a little bit, I'll admit. But I think I did a pretty good job here. Here, my object is the small black arrow right here, and it's 6 centimeters in front of the lens. Okay, so it's right here. Okay, now I drew my three rays, all right? The first ray that's the easiest to understand goes through the center of the lens and just goes straight. So that goes down this way. The second ray starts off parallel to the optical axis, hits the lens, and then is bent through the focal length or the focal point. So I drew that lens there. The third lens comes like it's coming through the focal point, right? Because it has to um, go through the focal point, this third ray. So since it's um, in front of, since it's between, I guess I should say, the focal point and the lens, then it looks like the ray is coming from the focal point, okay? So I drew that ray from the focal point to the lens, and then that one's going to emerge parallel. Okay, now look, this is supposed to be a converging lens, right? But you can see here that the rays on the far side diverge. So this is what happens if you have your object at a distance that's smaller than your focal length away from the lens, then even a converging lens will have rays diverge on the opposite side. Okay, but what kind of image is formed? Okay, well, if the rays diverge on the far side, then what you can do is trace them back. Okay, so you can trace that back the, the rays from the far side and use that to see where your image is. So I did the trace backs in blue to help differentiate from the rays. So here I did my trace back of the parallel ray and of the ray that goes through the focal point and of the ray that looked like um, it was emerging from the focal point. And when I did that, they all met up at this point right here. Okay, and then I drew my object 
and or my image and I drew my image in blue. So you can see that my image is upright, okay, and it's larger, sorry, it's larger than my object, so it's magnified. And it's a virtual image, right? It's a virtual image because it's on the same side as the object, which means that S prime would have to be a negative number. So you can see that my ray diagram matches up with what I found from my lens equations and my magnification equations. Okay, I hope you could follow all that and you understood it, and I'll see you around.